Mom just told me we can watch the Jubilee because we have Brit Box. <laughs> Woo! Except that we're not going to be here, so. Oh, so I get to watch it by myself. I'm, I'm not going to watch it. It's, it's a work day for you, anyway. I feel, I feel like it's going to be on like at like two in the morning. If it's like if it's. I don't Maybe know. I don't know. I'm not I thought doing I that saw shit. It noon our time, so I don't know what it is. Something in the evening part, anyway. I don't know. We're back. Hello. Hello. We've been gone for too long. Uh, so normally what I do is after we've been off a week, I scroll through the timeline and see what I've been talking about on Twitter. Um, but we've been gone for like <laughs> six weeks, so uh, this is going to be a weird one. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. More or less. More. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm airing out the tum <laughs> currently. Uh, I've hit 30 weeks, so I missed my second trimester. The third <laughs> one's harder. Um, but anyway, we'll get into and, our... And the world's all gone to hell, but you know. Well, the six weeks ago, the world had already gone to hell. That well, hasn't I know, changed. but it just keeps going. <laughs> it like, just keeps... I don't know if we're ever going to get to an upturn, and it depresses me. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank, you for, thank you Happy for leaving us off. <laughs> Um, okay, the Cambridges, I said it right that time. You did. Whatever. Woo! Are in Scotland, uh, and the big tut-tut yesterday mm. was they took a helicopter ride to avoid what would be a little over an hour drive. This news coming on the heels that William seems to have awarded his own Earthshot program a BAFTA. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, you didn't know that? I didn't know. How does he do that? He's in charge of the BAFTA? He's their, like, he's their, like, main royal patron. He shows up every year. They just lost, like, their, um, like, the BAFTA director uh, under accusations that she had gotten too close to William and Kate. And now his little Earthshot thing that apparently attracted, like, 12 viewers in the UK won a BAFTA. Isn't that amazing? What a coincidence. Anyway... We've talked about this before. To a degree, everyone is a climate hypocrite. Yeah. Um, but And I'm a helicopter chicken. I would ne- Even though I'm sure statistically a car is more dangerous, I would never get in a helicopter instead of driving in a car for an hour. But that's just me. Well, I mean, I would. But, um, but <laughs> it's... It's... it's um, it is, again, uh, uh, climate-wise, a, not a great thing to do. Um, And I guess it just goes back to the frustration of if this, you know, if this were Harry or Meghan or anyone else, uh, the press would be up in arms about it and we we won't hear a thing about it. Yeah. Well, and I don't get it either because, I mean, okay, I guess a helicopter is probably quicker, but if you jump in a car and left somewhere versus having to get wherever you have to get for the helicopter and get on the helicopter and all that stuff, I mean, is it even saving an hour? Probably not. Okay. I feel like an hour drive in helicopter is what, like ten minutes? That I don't know. Maybe, I don't know even. how fast. Well, it's probably. I, we don't. I don't we don't know, know about. We, air don't have, stuff. we don't have access. To helicopter. <laughs> we don't have access. To, we don't have access to, obviously, we don't, we don't travel by helicopter very often, <laughs> or uh, ever, or ever. Um, speaking of helicopters, we once again have to talk about the fact that the royals just decided they don't have to be specific on trips costing less than fifteen thousand pounds. So for fiscal year 2020 to 2021, there were a total of 47 helicopter trips we know nothing about, likely traveling just between palaces, which are all, again, like within a, a short drives of each other. Yeah. Another, th- I, I don't travel between palaces a whole lot either. So. <laughs> um, I still won't ever get over that British taxpayers paid for a hedge for Kensington Palace, mm-hmm. so William and Kate could, get on, could get on helicopters with less paparazzi photos or, or other people seeing them, because they wanted to hide how often they were traveling by helicopter. Which should be the first clue. <laughs> which, should, which should be the first red flag. If you're trying to hide what you're doing, what you're doing is probably not not good, and you probably know it. Yes. Well, and you charge the taxpayers, again, now for just a giant bush. <sighs> yeah. And apparently they're fine with it. Because you guys keep them. But are they? I don't know. (laughs) Then, of course, we have Charles Mm -hmm. opening up Parliament for the first time on his golden chair. (laughs) That seriously was the most ridiculously ostentatious, ostentatious display that was so out of sync with what he was trying to talk about and what most people are going through. I just don't get it. I also, okay, here's my own little other weird little thing. Okay. I don't, the, all the gold, like, 
it's the same thing when you see like Donald Trump's like the inside of anywhere he lives and it's all everything covered in gold. I think it is so horrifically ugly that even if I had the money to do that and even if I wanted to spend that money on interior design, that is just not the direction I would go. Well, <laughs> most of it is very old, Mom. Well, in the case of Charles Chair, probably, but not in the case of Donald Trump's gold toilets. Okay, but we are talking about <laughs> Donald Trump's gold toilets. We're talking about Charles opening up Parliament for the first time. And I still can't believe they gave the crown its own car. Yeah, it's... This crown that is chocked full of shit they stole. Um, a lot of times accompanied by great violence. Well, and and I, they gave it its own car. <laughs> I told you this already, but my favorite thing about that whole thing with Charles on the chair was the tweet that said, in response to the part of the speech where he was talking about trying to help people that are suffering, like, financially, that, you know, perhaps he could sell the chair. <laughs> yeah, an idea. <laughs> there was one idea. Um, uh, I, I, again, I think it just, it show and then... Like, I was watching some of the videos of all the, like, historic, like, the pomp and circumstance that goes, or whatever they say. Yeah. Um, and it just, it feels, maybe as a young person who's also an American, I don't know, it just, it feels so stupid right well, now. Yeah, like it does feel stupid right now. And I think at one point, I, I think that sort of pomp and circumstance stuff and sort of traditions and... I don't know, certain, you know, things that happen every year and there's certain traditions around them. I mean, I think in certain times and for certain people, maybe that can kind of be, you know, something everyone can rally around. Yeah. And be like, oh, look at how great England is. Here's our great traditions and we're so proud to be English, whatever. But it seems in 2022... <laughs> in a country that has, you know, people scraping to, you know, yeah. get food or heat or whatever it is they're struggling about, it seems to be way more divisive to me than even remotely something that kind of brings people together. Well, I feel like everything, like the only constant ever is, is that things change. And it, it feels like we, we kind of... Let it go under Elizabeth because she's so old yeah. and she's been around forever. Right. Um, obviously not as far back as most of these things, you know, come from. But it, it felt like we were kind of willing to give her institution a pass. I don't think Charles's version of that institution is going to get that same pass. No. And you, I mean, things do change. The world's changed. Everything's changed. You can't just with blinders on, keep moving straight forward the way you've always done things in some, you know, out of some tradition yeah. without any recognition of all the changes. And that's what it seems like. They're going down this tunnel with blinders on and just insist yeah. on doing... Th I mean, it's like it goes back to the whole the keeping up with the tours thing and, and the pictures in the Jeeps and the things that sort of are all kind of historic but completely out of step and out of touch and you know, horrific in the modern world. And yeah. I think they just, I don't know what's going to, I mean, they're either going to have to get dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century that we're 22 years into, or they're going to take some hits they're gonna take some hits and or go away i mean well and uh, there's been some very public i mean everywhere people are are hurting but specifically in the uk there have been some very public heartbreaking story you know there just there just was an elderly woman who basically says she rides the bus all day because that's how she stays warm yeah. she's only eating one meal a day someone pointed out there there just was another documentary that came out where a, a very small child is basically saying we try not to eat too much in one day. Like, it's it's right. very, you know, I, I think in the back of our minds, you know, people are suffering. But then when you see kind of representatives of groups that really kind of pull on people's heartstrings saying, hey, we're starving and we don't have enough money right. to stay warm. Um, well, and it's one thing when things are going well and the royal family can do their little sure, thing. And sure. you can just sort of like whatever. 
uh, you know, yeah. let them have their pomp and circumstance, and they bring in tourists and, you know, whatever. Kind of. Kind of. Whatever. <laughs> Maybe they do. It's an excuse. Yeah. But, I mean, when things are going well, it's one thing. Yes. When things are not going well, it's a whole different thing. And the the inequities of it and yeah. the kind of ridiculousness of it uh, get highlighted. Well, and it feels like they're proud of their ability. They're, they're, like, proud of the fact that they don't read the room. And they're, like, into that. They view that as a strength. Like, we don't change. You guys change. And they refuse to read a room. And they're, they're, they're like, proud of it. Yeah. And I think Elizabeth has kind of kept the consequences of that behavior at bay. But she's obviously on her way out. Yeah. Um, and it's like, you know, the joke was William looked very, very stern all that that day and, and I my joke was that he saw what life is like without his grandmother's protection and it's not great because yeah. especially Elizabeth too because she's a woman she doesn't show up in the Idi Amin cosplay military right. bullshit which is a pro I mean she wears yeah. that stupid crown for right. the stolen right. shit but she doesn't show up looking like a dictator from mm-hmm. Russia yeah. or yeah. Africa um, and Charles showed up in his little dictator cosplay, yeah. just looking old and not in like a good way. Just he looked and he old. was sort of hunched. I mean, he just sort of he looked tired. Yeah. I don't think you want to be looking tired right before you take on this job that you've been waiting for your whole life. And I, another thing I saw that obviously I've realized, but kind of was highlighted is here's two grown adult men whose only job really is waiting for someone to die. Yes, I mean it's. My it's, favorite Twitter account, Burner Royalty, it, pointed that out. It's, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, do something. Yeah. I mean, don't just show up to, you know, for photo ops. I mean, do something with your life. You have this incredible opportunity and, and you have incredible resources. Do something. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. I just can't imagine squandering that opportunity. Well, they're proud and of that's it, what they, they're proud no, of. No, I, re- I know they are. Well, and there's, you know, every every time they kind of screw up like this, it, it, there there's another push um, basically saying, you know, someone will tweet out, hey, after the queen goes, why don't we have a referendum on whether yeah. we even want to continue this thing? And it's flippant because royalty is built in. It, it would be right. very hard to truly abolish yeah. the that. But every time they do that, like the one I saw had like 40,000 likes. Yeah. I mean, it, but it, does that matter? No. But it just, every time they do something like this, there's another wave. And Charles is not going to be able to stave it off like his mother did. Um, and I just want to say, um, also after this wave, um, there is very little evidence they actually bring in uh, a whole lot of money. Um, the buildings would attract probably the same amount of people. And they could open up tours more if they mm. were empty. Um, so that there, there's actually very little evidence that they bring in more than they right cost. well and you know at the same just time a, just at, the, thing. at the same time you know i don't know exactly what you'd consider the heyday of the british monarchy but certainly uh in the middle of the 20th century they were more favorably looked on than they're looked on now and the people that lived that and remembered that are are in ever shrinking numbers sure. and the people who have only lived under the you know waning days of elizabeth and um uh seeing all the nonsense that's been going on the last you know 20 30 years yeah um are going to be in the majority and i think that's going to affect what happens and they won't but have elizabeth exactly to how. Yeah. throw down yeah, exactly how that's going to affect things. I obviously have no clue, but we'll see. Seems like it's going to affect things. We'll see. Um, Archwell has joined the Marsh. Mar- Archwell has joined the Marshall Plan for Moms, a nonprofit organization that focuses on working families. Um, the most recent statement was specifically about business sponsored um, or on location childcare. Uh, Megan released a statement to that effect. Um, and she's previously released a statement about paid family leave. Uh, we should have both of those things. Yeah. Um, we're the only, like, we're the only country who doesn't. Yeah. And that's obviously about to affect me very strongly, so. Except we live in the only state that actually has paid That's true, but we're going to be vague about where we live. Yeah. 
Oh, well, in the Pacific. I guess no. that's <laughs> Um, but even though it's not zero, which I appreciate, it is 12 weeks and I'm going to max out the program and it's going to be like 60% of my income. No, I re- I realize all of that. Yes. But, you know, uh, thank you state for doing the bare minimum. Better, it's better than you <laughs> nothing. Know, other yes. States that it is nothing. better than nothing. It's better than other Thank states you that for have doing bare, the bare minimum the state Just we live in. Barely. <laughs> barely, but thank you. I mean, it is, it's better than nothing. It is. That's true. Um, but when you, when, like being pregnant right now is just weird for a lot of reasons. Um, but it's just like when you, when you really find out that literally every other uh, country other than ours, including countries that, uh, you know, our government would talk shit about, yeah. have have some better form of family leave. It 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 sucks. Yeah. Well, as you know, and, and some form of of better health care, and yes. some form of you know better paying for college, and mm-hmm. some form of better uh, retirement pension type stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, we we do a bad job of a lot of things. I know, but it didn't used to affect me as much. I felt like <laughs> no, it does. Now I'm mad. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope uh, Megan Marco keeps focusing on this specific thread uh, because it affects me. Yeah. Uh, so any anything, anything you can do, I'd appreciate it. Um, Harry's back playing polo. They raise a shit ton of money. His little charity team. I say little, I don't I know. I guess that's good. I mean, polo I, to me is one of those snooty well, sure, rich people sure, things, but. sure. But at least they're doing a snooty rich person thing to raise money. Yeah. We were joking. I, I don't know anything about polo. I don't we either. were joking that we might have to learn the rules <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> I know nothing about polo. Someone said it's like kind of like rugby on horses, but I don't know anything about rugby. It's, yeah, I thought it was more like kind of soccer or field hockey on horses. I don't know. but Well, I, I know some stuff about soccer. Uh, most of what I know about polo, I know from one scene in Pretty Woman. <laughs> we're really good at this we know a lot about helicopter we know a lot, know about, a lot about rich people shit i know a lot about uh uh, uh major american sports i don't know a lot mm. about minor rich rich people, people sports but at least i didn't know that they, they do raise a lot of well, money that's so good. that's good that's good, that's good. Yeah. um and i think it stings the brits a little bit to see harry doing something that's considered kind of british in the united states and i love that yeah. I love that for him. Um, Archie turned three, which feels weird. Uh, I feel like COVID just totally warped our perception of time. And I kind of feel bad for a lot of those kids that were born, you know, 2019, 2020, because it feels like, I mean, time moves fast regardless, but damn, like it's just gone. Well, yeah, I think I feel less sorry for the kids that were born then than for the kids that were like, you know, five or yeah. starting kindergarten in 2020 yeah. or something. Their whole... School experience has been weird and yeah. warped, and and their whole whole conscious memory has been affected by. I mean, hopefully, by the time the kids born in twenty nineteen or twenty twenty really have conscious memories, will be post post ish. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I whatever that looks like. Get increasingly distressed that we'll never be there, but um. But yeah, so he's three. Woo! I, I love that we like never see him. I yeah. think that's great. Um, and I don't think we we didn't get a picture. I don't think we got a picture. That's fine. They don't have to release pictures. I yeah. do love that each year the royal family basically has to use the same photos yeah. because they don't have access to any new photos. Yeah. Um, I tweeted that it was uh, what you were looking at when I first logged on was. Uh, my Emperor Palpatine tweet um, that was basically saying it's it's funny that the day after, you know, Kate made this whole thing about maternal mental health being so important, which it is, um, she had to use a three-year-old photo of her own nephew because of how poorly her family treated um, her pregnant sister-in-law, which is ironic. Yes. Yeah. I, I and always, sad. And sad. Um, but it's just, I always worry that I'm not using ironic, right? 
Because, like, a lot of times it's just, like, a coincidence. Like, the whole song by Alanis Morissette yeah. is just coincidences. And it always stresses me out that I've used that word and someone's going to be like, no, I think that's a correct use. Someone's going to be like, it's not, yeah. it, that's not right. Um, but it is sad. But also, I, I don't know, maybe I just have a poor coping mechanism, but I just kind of find it also funny. Um, and... I, once again, have to bring up what I feel like was one of the most bullshit things <laughs> the royal family pulled. So, a couple months after Ma- Megan married in, they announced this whole new social media thing. They weren't going to let, like, these hate comments stay. They were basically saying, we're going to moderate our comment sections. Um, you know, we're going to start blocking people. We're going to start deleting these nasty comments. Um, and then they used that new social media policy to hide uh, comments uh, about William's alleged affair and kept the Meghan Markle ones up. Yeah. Um, and we uh, and someone else brought this up on Archie's birthday this year because, again, there's all these incredibly hateful tweets about a three-year-old boy um, and the royal family social media accounts just leave them up. Well, they, they clearly do whatever serves their purposes at the time or if they think serves their purposes. I mean, I think this whole thing has been a royal cell phone (laughs) and I literally I mean but I think they think that somehow why they haven't learned that the failure to embrace Harry and Meghan and to instead allow all this vicious hateful nonsense to go on is was the wrong tack but they apparently just keep doubling down on it and they somehow think that people saying mean things about uh, a Sussex will somehow uh, make them yeah, look including better. a three year old. Yeah, make them look better and don't realize that it just makes them look more petty and horrible. Well, and I feel like the people you attract matter. Um, mm. We'll go back to Donald Trump for this. Yeah. Um, you know, there was this whole the the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, I think I said that right. Um, basically, released this thing that was like you know. Uh, white supremacists actually don't usually vote for the main Republican candidate. They usually either write someone in or they they trickle through a couple, but but they don't usually get behind whoever the mainstream geo... Like, they didn't vote for Mitt Romney. They didn't vote for John McCain. They didn't vote... All the freaking white supremacists voted for Donald Trump. So what did they see in him? <laughs> uh, an that, ally. Yes. I mean, I, and, I, but, but, and, and he was blamed. I mean, because usually and historically, mainstream... Republican candidates, sure. you know, you know, rebuke endorsements by yes. white supremacists yes. and give back sure. donations from white supremacists but, but my point- and pretend that they yes. don't want to be associated with white supremacists. And maybe some of them even meant it once upon a time. But <laughs> Donald Trump was like, sure, you know, um, but, but my you. point was, you was stand back and stand yeah. by good people on both sides. Anyway, yeah. um, they all voted for him. And so it's like, wh- again, you're looking at him and going, what a- What about you attracted all these people who don't normally just vote for the main Republican candidate? Same thing with the royal family. It's like, you guys seem to have attracted quite a few either white supremacists or just ge- in general icky people who think it's okay mm-hmm. to attack a three-year-old. Yeah. Um, and what does that say about you? Nothing good. Nothing good. Moderate. I mean, they turned off the comment sections after the crown, for God's sake. Yeah. Because <laughs> Prince Charles is a wimp. Yeah. yeah. But they can't delete comments that, you know, call a three-year-old. I can't even say the words that they're calling him because this video would get probably taken off of YouTube. Yeah. But they leave those up. Telling. Hmm. 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 Anyway, um, as usual, the disclaimer is uh, there is stuff going on in the world that is bigger than, I don't know, I feel like this this one, there are, there are serious stuff. I mean, the UK monarchy is shoving in people's faces that they are very rich and they don't give a shit what you think. Um, and they don't care if people are racist. I think that's kind of, it's, it's not important. It's not unimportant. It's not as important as as what's going okay. on in the United States uh, okay. with women's rights and everyone else's rights. Okay, and, I'm moving on to that. You know, If you're an American, <laughs> please vote in the midterms. Yes. Every position, even if you live in a blue state, like we do. Well, yeah, and watch out for your local elections. That's, you know, they're, yes. they're trying to come from the bottom up and... and 
that's those are easy elections to have really horrible people get elected in because not many people vote on hyper local uh, candidates yes. and um, you want to make sure that you know we have good people at all levels of government that can't just randomly recall electors they don't like yeah um, get out and march on Saturday if you can. Uh, if you live on the East Coast, find your local Supreme Court justice's house and yeah. go stand in front of it. Yeah. Peacefully, but... Right, uh, right inside Mock <laughs> Chalk, wherever you can, <laughs> legally and politely. Uh, that's probably it. Do your best. Do your best. Have a good day, a good week, a good weekend. Think positive thoughts. Unlike mom. <laughs> I try. Um, all right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.